Hey, what's up, you guys? Sorry for being MIA for so long. I've been extremely busy, and they've been doing construction at the uh, apartment that I live at, so I have not been able to record any videos. Um, today, they're doing construction on the other side, so it's not as loud. I can still hear it like it's right next to me, but it's not literally right on top of my roof. So um, I think I can do a video. Also, I do a lot of like live sound. I'm also a product specialist for a company called Music Marketing, and they've been having me travel around and do a lot of events lately, so I have not had time to actually sit down and make a video for you guys. But today, I'm going to do a video featuring this Blue Cat Audio uh, Dynamics 4 plugin. It's the latest version. And honestly, I was really digging this thing. I think it's a really powerful tool. And one thing is, I'm never going to tell you guys to check out a plugin that I don't think is worthwhile. This is a really, really cool compressor plugin. And I'm going to show you guys exactly why. Demo it if you don't have a good workhorse all in one compressor. Let's go straight into it. Like all Blue Cat products, you have an on and off switch, you have the opacity, which is right here. You have this little tool that lets you view the actual controls. You can take the meters in and out. You can uh, view your dynamic response, basically the curve of your compression circuit. And you have this little cool little nifty thing that shows you the actual waveform of the audio. And I'll show you that right now. That's pretty cool, huh? You can even freeze it with this little snowflake button. Green is actually the lower curve. And it's like this purple is the actual upper curve. You have this zoom tool. So lets you kind of zoom in to see like more what you're actually doing for like... Like, let me show you if I actually crank up the compression and turn it down. You can actually zoom in and see more or less of it. I like to stay kind of zoomed in because that way I can see more um, compression and how much I'm actually doing. Now, the thing that I really like about this compressor, though, is this whole section right here, this detection section. And I'm going to go into the signal flow real quick, and then we'll go straight into here. So first we have input gain. We have pre-gain, minus 20, all the way to plus 20. You have a pre-amplifier filter, which basically is a high and low pass filter that actually affects the signal. So you can cut all the way to 15K with the low cut, and you can cut all the way to 100 hertz with the uh, high cut. The side chain, this is the internal side chain. So if you actually click this, you can listen to it, and you can tell the compressor what it's listening to, but it won't be affecting the actual signal. Facile la forma. That's pretty cool if you need to really filter something out. You have an external button, which lets you actually listen to the external sidechain. You have this oversampling, which basically oversamples so it can uh, prevent it from having any aliasing. I actually use this almost all the time. It adds a little bit more CPU, but honestly, it sounds really, really good. So now going straight into the detection circuit, which is my favorite section, we have the peak envelope detection which basically means it detects the transients. Um, we have an attack from zero milliseconds to 2,000, a hold from zero to 2,000, a release from zero to 2,000, and we have this really cool little shape knob, which basically changes the way that it actually works. Honestly, I don't mess with it too much. Um, you have an RMS time, 2,000 milliseconds, all the way to, I believe, about one millisecond. And this is really cool because you have variable control between which section peak or RMS. You have a VCA and opto mode, which basically means that it's going to react like a VCA compressor, very aggressive, very attacky, very like, uh, you know, very accurate. Or you have that slower GUI opto style, which basically is really slow and it adds that really like gentle release that's kind of dependent on the actual transient going into it. You have a peak and RMS mode, which basically lets you choose between peak or RMS, and you can go in between. You can choose to be just a little bit of the RMS or just a lot of it and just have a little bit of the peak. This really lets you have full and total control over your compression that you're going to get. And then you have, like I showed you guys already, you have this really cool little thing that lets you view the actual envelope of the actual channel going in. You have the dynamic response, which responds to the ratio and the control of everything, which is really cool. You have this depth control, which basically limits or controls how much gain reduction or expansion or whatever you want to do. I really like this. If I ever want to do a lot of compression or keep something compressed at all times, but limit how much I'm going to compress it, this is perfect for that. Now, the ratio can go from upwards compression, downwards compression. You have a soft knee, hard and soft knee. You have the depth control, which controls how much you're going to do it. You have the threshold that goes all the way down to minus 60. You have the lower curve, which is basically a gate or an expander. So you can gate it out or you can expand the lower volume signal to turn it up. This also has a knee control, same thing. Um, the knee can be pretty soft. I actually really like it like that because it's really cool. You have a depth control for that too. You have the gain reduction meter, which I've shown you. And you have the output makeup gain, which goes from minus 60 to plus 60. You have the auto compensate button, which I turn off. You have a dry wet control, so you can actually blend between the signal, process and unprocessed. You have a zero latency limiter, which goes from hard to soft, and it's variable. 
you have a uh, release from zero milliseconds all the way to 1000. And then you have a post gain that is after the limiter. So you do have to be careful because you can clip at this point, but you have an extra 20 dBs of boost or cut, which I think is really cool. Sometimes I'm smashing something and I need to like get a little bit more control. Or if I just want to feel like just fine tuning something. Also, if you hold shift, you can get these really fine tuned parameters where it's 0.1 increments. Um, I'm on a PC right now. Um, when I'm on my Mac, which is actually when I do my, my events at Westlake, I think it's just double click that it resets everything. Um, but on my PC, instead of have a mouse, I just right click. Let's go straight into this now. We have a guitar, and I want to show you guys how the attack and release modes change. So we're going to have a really, really, really aggressive and very, it might even distort um, the settings for the attack and release, right? We're going to do a ratio of about four to one, or actually of four to one. And I'm going to show you guys how everything sounds when you go between it. So here we go. We're going to just listen to it in VCA mode, and I'm going to slowly bring it into opto mode. And I want you to really listen to how it is. And actually watch on the waveform view on how the attack and release characteristics change. So here we go. So as you can hear from that, it comes from this super aggressive pumping sound to going to the opto, which is like way smoother. It's way smoother. And to me, it sounds way better, but that's only because I'm listening to the attack uh, and release characteristics of just peak. So the opto mode is obviously making it slower, making it more like act like a tube kind of compressor style thing. So now what I'm going to do is we're going to go from opto and then switch to VCA. And then I'm going to freeze it and I want you to actually view the waveform. I think this is the perfect example. You have this straight up like big immediate drop off. And this, if you actually look at it, it's slowly curving out, even though it's really, really just barely compressing it, it still has a gentle, uh, it's a very gentle release. Now right here, when I start activating it, no matter what, even if it's compressing a lot, it's still just pumping its way out. Really, really cool. Next, what I wanna show you guys, is the difference between the peak and RMS. So I'm gonna do even more compression. I want you to listen to this and I'm gonna, just basically go from peak and just bring it into RMS. So you guys ready? Here we go. I think that is the best example right here. You see this really, really fast, really, really aggressive compression. And then as soon as I activate it, it's just tails off and it's still holding. That is really cool and really interesting. So you can actually get a different sound just by tweaking the knobs even just a little bit. So let me explain what this is basically doing. Since it's using RMS to do the attack and release kind of characteristics, it's slower to respond and it's way slower to let go. The peak, since it's really, really aggressive, you know, you can get really great um, VCA style compression. And since you go into opto mode, even with the peak, because it's opto styled, it still is slower. So what I like to do is I like to go in between and I like to mess with them. I like the opto because it doesn't sound compressed, but I like the uh, peak control because I have more control. I can be faster, but with using the opto, it'll kind of give me some give. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how you can actually compress these louder peaks without actually sounding pumping or anything like that using the same settings that I'm using right now. I may up the release to about 50 just because I want that to be kind of like smooth. So let's listen to this now. So I'm getting about 60 dBs of compression on the guitar part right here, and I'm not really hearing any pumping and stuff like that. Now, we're about 60, no, we're about 73% opto and 43% uh, RMS. So let's actually do this. If we did this just VCA and peak purely, let's listen to that. It sounds nasty. You know, it's, it's kind of pumping and I'm not really liking it. It's, it's too fast and it's too aggressive. 
So what I'm doing is I'm just giving it some opto so it's slower and I'm giving it some RMS so it has some like give to it. You know, it sounds a little bit smoother. And as you can hear from that, it really helps it mesh and gel together. So we're getting a lot of gain reductions. So we're going to bump it up by about maybe three and a half dB. Let's see if we can kind of like gain the apparent loudness the same. Cool. So we're gaining a good amount of volume, but I'm going to still back it down. Um, now, next, what I really want to do is I want to show you guys the expansion tool. So I'm going to go into the ratio section. I'm going to kind of bring it up here. And this way, what I'm going to do, I'm going to even give it a soft knee. And this way, what it's basically going to do is it's basically going to bring the lower volume up. So everything that's quieter is going to be pushed upwards in volume. Um, you're basically doing some expansion of the lower levels. So you're making the lower level things louder, but only when they're quiet to a certain extent. So here we go. Cool. So I'm getting about 3 dBs of, uh, I guess, of level gain for the quiet, quiet parts. And I really want the really quiet parts. I'm not really trying to get the louder parts. I want the quiet parts because what that's going to do is that's going to give me just enough control so it stays about the same without sounding too compressed. I'm also going to bring up this threshold a little bit. I think I'm getting a little bit too much compression. All right. So now let's take a listen to this from here. And then we'll kind of transition into the louder parts. So let's go back into here. So it sounds way smoother. It kind of goes into it. It's still louder, but it's like gently sloping up louder. Honestly, it's really cool. I really like it. Just the fact that you can go between Opto, VCA, Peak, and RMS is really, really powerful. I'm trying to make this a quick example of what I did. I spent about two hours doing um, yesterday. So hope you guys like this. I hope you guys like this extended video. If you guys want, I can do stuff like this all the time. Um, one of my jobs is literally to do stuff like this. I go to, I go to places and do events and just feature um, plugins from any company that I'm working with. So if you guys want me to, feel free to ask. If I don't own the plugin, I can see if I can get something, or if I can't get it, I'll just buy it. So I'll see you guys later. Thanks for your patience and thanks for staying subscribed. If you want to see more videos like this or anything like that I've made in the past, feel free to ask and uh, subscribe. Thanks.